Good morning, everybody. So glad that you are here and that we get together together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ together. And as we begin worshiping the Lord, as we set our sights on making the most of our time together and what God's going to say to us, let's hear God's word from John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 says, But the hour is coming, and now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank You for who You are. And Lord, we thank You for, with just the, the clarity that You speak, Lord, on so many issues, and especially in regards to our worship. So Lord, I pray that as we worship You this morning, we worship You in, in, in spirit, Lord, and in truth. Father, I thank You. God, that you're worthy of all of our worship. Lord, we thank you for the great salvation that you give us in Jesus. And Lord, we pray that as we worship, that you would move and work. Lord, for those who need you, Lord, that you would reveal that to them in a clear way. Lord, for those who just need your encouragement, your direction, Lord, that you would minister to them. Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, so good to see you. We're glad that you're here. Let's stand as we sing and we worship. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst at my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i am my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all into your holiness when I gaze into your loveliness when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you when I found the joy of reaching your heart when my will becomes enthroned in your love when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you i worship you i worship you I worship you. I worship you. 
guys and girls. Kevin, can we use that microphone also? I forgot to grab one. And uh, how's it going today? Good, all right. Well, um, I, what is this right here? A glove. Good job. Y'all are awake. Y'all are sharp. Now, this is Greg Rhodes, and he's going to be sharing with us a little bit later in the service. Can y'all say hi, Greg? Hi, Greg. Awesome. Greg, this is a great group of kids up here. I want you to know they are sharp. Uh, many of them know the Lord. And uh, they're growing. But Greg, he is a missionary. Does anybody know what a missionary does or is? Okay, Hannah? Okay, tell about God, yeah. Payson, did you have something you wanted to mention? Man, that's exactly right. Y'all had the same answer. That is very good. And uh, so, Greg, you're a missionary. Have you ever gone around the world to tell people about Jesus? I have. I have, a couple times. That's exciting. So how long have you been doing that? Been doing it for 13 years. 13 years. That is exciting. Now, what are some places that you've gone to do that? I have. I've gone for short times to a lot of countries, but we spent a lot of time in China and in Thailand. All right. So that's pretty good. Now, the reason I, I brought the globe up here is I know some of y'all are really good at geography, right? Does somebody think, so we're going to try and find two countries on there, okay? Some of y'all are going to find China. That's the easy one. And then Thailand next, okay? Okay, y'all do? All right, well, we'll just jump into the hard one, okay? So we got Zane and Owen. Can y'all guys work together here? Y'all just stay right there, okay? Now, when we say on your mark, get set, go, here, y'all get your hands off the globe. When we say on your mark, get set, go, y'all can be looking for Thailand, okay? On your mark, get set, go.
<laughs> I can't either. <laughs> Did y'all find it? Yeah. Okay, show the, show the other kid. Or actually, show Greg first. He's been there. He knows. Man, you nailed it. Way to go. All right, y'all, show, y'all let the other kids have a look also, okay? And you avoided the Thailand or Taiwan trap. That's always a tricky one. You did great. Man. Hey, good job, guys. Good job, Zane. Good job, Owen. Well, uh, and we'll get to hear more about more from Greg later in the service, but the reason why being a missionary is so important, okay, is so that people can know about Jesus. Now, let me ask you all this. Should us as a church, should we be telling people here in Friona about Jesus? Man, absolutely, and we do. But it's also uh, very important because sometimes God leads uh, where folks are get to go around the world to t- share with others about Jesus. And in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, is a very important verse of why we share Jesus with others. And it says that there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, whose name is it? Who is the one who saves us from our sins? Yeah, God. Well, who'd God send? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. That is exactly right. He's the one who died on the cross for our sin and rose victorious over the grave and gives us new life in Christ. And so let's uh, want to pray for our missionaries that we have. And also, I'm excited for the rest of the service that we have. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for how good you are. I, I pray for... Uh, Greg, as he shares later in the service, that you would speak and minister through, through him to us this morning. But, Lord, I pray especially for their ministry. And, Lord, we pray for just our many other missionaries who are faithfully serving you around the globe. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, Lord, and uphold them where they can share the, the wonderful gospel message. Lord, we praise you for how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Man, good job, guys. And as the kids grab their stuff, we're going to go over a few um, prayer requests. This is a big week for a church for our youth group. Jason, man, why is this week a big week for our youth group? We're we're getting the mic front. Okay. Um, This week we're leaving Thursday to go to youth camp, so we... Uh, I'll tell you more about that at the end of the service, but we, we would uh, welcome your prayers uh, this week. So, Amen. So it is a big week. Got youth camp coming up. Also, um, on our prayer list, it's a big week. Our expectant moms list is, is dwindling, okay? And so that's a joy because these moms are having their babies, and the babies are, are well, and mamas are well. But you can take off Delaney Cooper. Uh, her and Will had, had, or she had the baby, and her and Will had now are... Parents to little Haley and uh, Mama doing good, baby doing good. Okay, amen. So praise God uh, for, for them. So continue to pray for Delaney and little Haley. And also on our prayer list, though, add uh, Sharon Anthony. That's Beverly's uh, cousin. And she's in Northwest uh, Hospital there in Amarillo, had a mini stroke. Was that today or yesterday when she had that? Okay, Thursday. How's she doing? Okay, okay, so we need to be praying for for Sharon Anthony, Um, so be praying for her. Also, down on our long-term care concerns on our prayer list, uh, we've been praying for many months for Dale Moreland. And and Dale Moreland, he's the associate pastor at the church at Quail Creek in Amarillo, and he's been uh, battling cancer. And here uh, recently, this past week, um, he went, they went to MD Anderson's to have a lot of tests to check and see how the treatment is doing and where the cancer is at. And praise God, when they did the test, they said, man, the cancer is no longer there. And so he's cancer free. And so praise God uh, for that. And so, man, is wonderful, wonderful news uh, with that. Let me ask any other prayer updates or prayer requests. All right, I do also want to say thank you to uh, the ones who were host homes. We have a group with us this morning from Colorado Christian University. And so, young way, right quick. So, and they are on their way back home to Colorado from a trip that they've been on. And uh, so, it's been a joy to have them and appreciate all the homes who have been host homes for them. And as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer, uh, let me ask Kevin Cooper, would you lead us in prayer?
Amen. I'm going to ask you if you'll grab your Bibles and, uh, and grab your Bibles. We're going to be in God's Word just for a few moments before we get back to singing and praising the Lord. And turn over to the book of Acts. And, um, and so I'm excited that today we have Greg and, and his family with us. And he's going to be sharing a little bit later in the service. But as, uh, as believers, man, one of the things that is so important for us is that we stay centered on God's purpose for the church and for our lives. Because everything around us, I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, man, it is marketed to you and marketed to me as, man, go after, buy, do whatever, pleases yourself. Um, and so whether it's health stuff or vacations or trips or whatever you put in your house, that it is all about you. And, and the, the problem with that is that just our own human nature, man, our own pride and just selfishness, we gravitate toward that anyways. Okay? And I want you to understand that the church, that we're not immune to that either. That, that a church is not immune to uh, the kind of thinking that would maybe get off track and think, man, that, that the church, that the church that I go to or the church I'm looking for, that that it, it ought to be all about me. I mean, I ought to have music that makes me happy. That I have preaching that tickles my ears, makes me feel good. That it ought to have activities that, that serve me and my family. Because after all, man, I need to be happy. But the reality is, is that when you look through Scripture, that God has a much higher purpose and a much higher plan than you and I, than just our happiness, okay? Um, that God wants us to be people where we love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and as we love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, as we love our neighbor as ourself, man, that there are going to be times of great joy, and it is a joy from the Lord uh, that you experience in your life. But also, God is going to lead us to do things. Sometimes it may make us uncomfortable. Man, that there are going to be some trials that come into your life that are hard and, man, are not happy times. But even walking through those trials, that we can lean on God and His faithfulness. And, uh, and over in the book of Acts is where you're at. And the reason I wanted you to turn there is because this is uh, Jesus in Acts chapter 1 where He's talking with His disciples about uh, what was so very important, the final words that He left them before He ascended back to heaven. And the disciples had a lot of questions about things that were going on, uh, about what life was going to look like. And, and like in verse 6 of Acts chapter 1, verse 6, it says, So when they had come together, that was the disciples, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And they were wanting Israel's glory to just be renowned around the world. And, and they were looking forward to that. They thought, man, we're really close. They were... Uh, predicting on their own. Calendar. Look what Jesus says in verse 7. It says, And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Now I want you to think about what Jesus told them. Uh, because Jesus knew the answer to the question that they asked him. Jesus knew exactly when that, uh, that, 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 that is going to happen. Okay, But Jesus says, guys, man, that's not to be your focus. That's not to be your business. In verse 7, he says, look, you can trust God with that. Man, God is sovereign. God is over all. So don't get so busy about these unknowns or about these peripheral things that you lose sight of what is most important. And in verse 8, as he tells us what is most important, he says, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Jerusalem and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I want you to keep your eyes there on verse 8. Because first he says you're going to receive power. But it is a Holy Spirit power. That it is a power that comes only from God. And in Acts chapter 2 we see the fulfillment of this as the Holy Spirit man, was given to the church. God moved in a mighty way where people came to Christ. And scripture tells us that now as believers when somebody comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That the Holy Spirit of God comes to dwell inside you. And so understand that if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you have biblical salvation. So notice that he also gives us a purpose. He says you will be my witnesses, my witnesses. Now I want you to think about all the different things that you maybe talked about this week or texted about this week or, or shared with everybody on your social media or shared at the barber shop or the coffee shop. You, you probably witnessed and talked about just a lot of different things. Maybe you gave your two cents about politics. Maybe you had more than two cents to give. And you gave that also. 
Maybe you have had thoughts about a number of other things in, in this world or in your life that are going on. And, and look, as believers, we want to be wise and we want to be people who speak truth and love and are informed. But you know what the greatest thing that we are to be doing that Jesus says? He says that the greatest thing that we're to be doing as believers, the most important work that we're to be about as a church, our purpose is to be witnesses of who Jesus Christ is. We witness to the truth of who Jesus is, that Jesus is the Son of God. He lived a perfect and a powerful life, did amazing, mighty miracles. We are witnesses to the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and for my sin. We are witnesses to the truth that Jesus didn't just die, but three days later, he rose from the grave. And we are witnesses to the truth that Scripture says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We're witnesses to the truth of who Jesus is, but did you know that we're also witnesses? I'm talking if you're a born-again believer and you know Jesus Christ. You're also a witness to the fact that he'll save people even like you and even like me. You know, the greatest moment in my life, I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but it is the greatest moment in my life is when the Lord saved me as a third grader at Oak Street Baptist Church in Cary City, Texas. That's the day the Lord saved me. Man, he forgave my sins, changed my future, gave me life eternal and life abundant. And the greatest thing that you and I can be doing as a church and as, be, as believers is just to be doing what Jesus told us to be doing. And that is to be his witnesses. We don't need to come up with something different or new. Man, we just want to stay focused on what he's told us to do. So he gives us power. He gives us a purpose. But he also, did you notice there at the end of that verse, he gives us a place. Now, this original context he, he gave to his disciples. And they were gathered outside of Jerusalem, okay, on a hill. And so he, with them, they were right there in their hometown. That was where Jerusalem was, or not the hometown to them all, but where they were in Jerusalem. That's where he told them to stay till the Holy Spirit came. And, uh, and so he says, you're going to be witness my witnesses in Jerusalem. That was right there where, to the people that were around them, where they were at. And then he says, in Judea, that was like the, the countryside around that Jerusalem area. And then Samaria were their neighbors to the north. Now the Jews and, and Samaritans didn't really mix well, but Jesus said they need to hear the gospel too. They need to hear the saving message of Jesus. And then he says, and to the end of the earth, that you're going to have power, you have a purpose, that's to be witnesses of Jesus, but we also have places to take the gospel to and people to reach. And you know, as you read through the book of Acts, that's what you see unfold, is those original believers uh, that were there in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, empowered and led by the Holy Spirit, coming across, man, really many trials and challenges, but even in the midst of those, God was at work and he moved where God was glorified and people were saved. And, you know, as a church, that's why we exist. That's why Jesus hadn't called you home, is because he's left you here because there are people that still need to hear about Jesus. There are people that need to hear about Jesus here in Friona. There are people that need to hear about Jesus here in Parma County. There are people that need to hear about Jesus here in Texas and, man, in, in our country and in our world. So until Jesus comes back or until you kick the bucket and I kick the bucket and he calls us home, we're going to be faithful to that, to be his witnesses in his power to the people and places that he sends us. And, uh, man, it's a great joy that we, would be a, we get to be a part of that as a church. But it's so important that we make sure that we don't lose the aim and the focus that Jesus has given us. That we're his witnesses through his power in the places that he sends us. And, and that's one uh, reason I'm excited. I think this morning is a special morning uh, as we gather to worship the Lord. is because Greg is going to be coming and sharing here in a few moments after um, a few more songs and uh, Greg and and his wife they have been married for 19 years and uh, they have three wonderful kids Jana, Evelyn and Caleb and uh, Greg he has a lot of connections here to Friano. Greg's parents grew up in this church in fact this church sent his parents out as international mission board missionaries and kind of around what time frame was that do you know Greg? 
Okay, 83. And, uh, and so he has many family that still live in this Freona area. And so here in a little while in service, Greg is going to come and share with us they, about the work that God has allowed them to be a part of. They're serving with Pioneers, a missions organization, and they've been going overseas uh, for 13 years. And I'm excited to hear uh, what God is doing there, which I know will be an encouragement to you. But it's also exciting because God is also at work here. And he invites us to be a part of that. So, Kevin, would you continue to come and lead us as we praise the Lord? Well, how would you like some good news? How would you like some great news? There is a Redeemer, and that is great news. Let's stand as we sing that song, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, Son, and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done jesus my redeemer name above all names precious lamb of god messiah oh for sinners slain thank you your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done when I stand in glory I will see his face there I'll serve my king forever in that holy place thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done i once was lost in darkest night yet thought I knew the way the sin that promised joy in life had led me to the grave I had no hope that you would own a rebel to your will and if you had not loved me first I would refuse you still, but as I ran my hellbound race, indifferent to the cost, you looked upon my helpless state and led me to the cross, and I beheld God's love displayed. You suffered in my place. You bore the wrath reserved for me. Now all I know is grace. Hallelujah. All I have is Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is alone and live so all might see the strength to follow your commands could never come from me oh father use my ransom life in any way you choose 
and let my song forever be my only boast is you hallelujah all i have is christ hallelujah jesus is my life hallelujah all i have is christ hallelujah jesus is my life and all the people said amen amen you may be seated Thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is a real treat. Um, for those of you who uh, have been around a while, you might be familiar with my family ties here. My, uh, my parents were sent from this congregation to Africa. And when I think of home, it's a very confusing thing. When I think of home, I think of Africa. I think of, of my childhood growing up, going from village to village with my dad as he preached, as he taught, as he trained up pastors in churches there. But when I also think of home, I think of when we came home on uh, home assignments. And when we'd come home on home assignments on furlough, we would end up here. Often we would end up here. I remember doing VBS here. I remember doing Royal Ambassadors, RAs, if that's still a thing, I don't know. And this was a place where everyone knew me and I didn't know anyone. So, but it was a huge part of who I was. So I want you to know of that, the legacy of how this church sent people to the other ends of the earth and has had tremendous fruit. And as someone who was blessed by that, thank you. Because you were willing to send my parents out, I grew up thinking going across the world was normal. I grew up thinking I want to be like mom and dad. I want to take the good news of Jesus Christ to those who have not heard. And that's what we do. I don't know what's going on with the slides, but if you can stop them, that'd be great. <laughs> we'll get to all those pictures. They'll make sense later. Um, my family, Clarissa, my wife, and our three kids, Jana, Evelyn, and Caleb, now that now my kids get to be the ones who don't know anyone and we've been serving overseas since 2009 we first went to northwest china seeking to plant churches amongst a muslim people group there and if that sounds difficult it's a that's an understatement it was an incredibly difficult time an incredibly difficult place and it brought us to our knees regularly but we knew the Lord had us there. I ask that you continue to pray for the Muslims of China. There are so many things going on there, so many hardships for them as people, and so many more hardships for those who cry out in Jesus' name. But in 2015, after six years of service, the Lord called us out of China. And he did that in a fairly dramatic way. I went for a routine physical and was told that I had pancreatic cancer and I had a year to live. In that moment, things got really crystal clear. It was no longer about our ministry. It was no longer about what we were doing and all the people that were 
behind us, praying for us, supporting us. It was no longer about that. It was, to be honest, my heart first went to my family, and then it went to my God. And I said, Lord, what, I don't know what you're doing. I don't want my kids growing up without a father. I don't want my, my wife to be a widow. And instead of saying, oh, don't worry, in seven years you're going to be standing in front of FBC Friona and everything's going to be fine. He didn't say that. He said, look to me. And as I opened God's word, it seemed like every verse I landed on was, I am the God of the widow. I am the protector of orphans. I am the father to the fatherless. And as that started to seep into my heart, something new sprung forth, and it was joy. Because I realized, as the doctor said, I probably wouldn't survive the year. I realized I might be about to go see my Jesus. And it was amazing to walk into doctor's office after doctor's office, to walk through surgeries and recovery, and just to know my Jesus was a breath away. It doesn't mean I wasn't crying. It doesn't mean that I wasn't upset about what was happening to my family and to me. It didn't mean that it was easy. But there was something bigger. There was something greater that I was looking forward to in the midst of all that grief and pain. And that was being with my God. During that time, God started doing things in my heart that I didn't think needed to be done. I thought I was already fully committed to him. I thought I was all on board. But he started doing things and changing my passion. And my passion was like, what would it have been like to serve? What would it have been like to serve with this joy of knowing that this broken world did not have as the same hold on me like it did before? What would that look like? What would it look like to serve in those hard, difficult places, in those hard, difficult moments in life with a joy that I had found? A few days after um, surgery, the doctors came out and said, good news, we got it all. We found it incredibly early. You're incredibly fortunate. And you're probably now going to die an old man. This was six weeks, only six weeks after I'd been told I had a year to live. I'll tell you what, the human heart is not designed to take that shift. <laughs> and with that shift, I was like, Lord, I, suddenly I got to live a life. I was, you know, I was kind of ready to move on. <laughs> And I was like, Lord, you have shown yourself faithful. You took us to a place with terrible, terrible medical care to have us find this cancer earlier than ever would have been found in any other way if I was living a normal life. I say that knowing full well that God would have still done what he could do. But he had proven himself faithful in such a deep way. I was like, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And as time went by, it became clear and clear that he wanted, that my passion, the passion that he had given me was to minister to the missionaries who were serving all across the world and be a bearer of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the joy that he brings, the abundant life to them. Why in the world would they need that? They're missionaries. They're missionaries. They need that because of the incredible amount of stress they're under. 
there's a, there's a measure of stress that says um, 100 is kind of the normal. If you, if you hit 200 on this scale, you have a really good chance that you're going to have a major medical issue. If you hit 300, you are over 95%, the odds are 95% or higher that you're going to have a major medical issue in the next three years. The first three to five years of the missionary life, missionaries clock in at about 900. After things calm down, you're, you get the language, everything's kind of rolling, you kind of level out at a nice, easy 600. It is incredibly, incredibly stressful. It's not just a stress that you have to bear, but it's also a stress you have that shifts your identity. You can, I can't be the American Greg when I'm in Thailand if I hope to show the love of Christ. I have to be willing to be changed and changed in ways I never thought would be needed. And so I have to wrestle. It's a constant wrestling with who am I? But there's still all the normal family stuff. There's all the normal relationship stuff. There's all the normal personal stuff. All the normal disappointments and things like that. And then under all that stress, all those little cracks, all the little, just the little faults in your character become these wide canyons. It's incredibly difficult. One in three Americans experience experiences depression in their lifetime. Three out of four missionaries do. In this realm of your identity constantly being shifted, in this realm of where you're not sure what's going on around you most of the time. When there's an um, emergency, when you see uh, you know, a group of people on the street doing something, and you don't know what's going on, so you don't know the proper response. That is fertile ground for anxiety. Missionaries don't just go overseas. They often go to places where people are suffering, where things are difficult. They work amongst people who are often marginalized in their societies. And so they're right up next to and experience, along with the people they're ministering to, the traumas of that life. It's a hard job. And you're away from your support network. So who is there? Who's there to help you? If you're fortunate, there's other missionaries. If you're fortunate, you have people back home who are reaching out and praying for you and connecting with you. And I'm, I'm, I'm so overjoyed to be able to say I work with 14 other people, all of us counselors, one of us a psychiatrist, who make ourselves available to be there for them. And when they come in and start talking about being depressed, being anxious, their family issues, their struggle with their kids, their struggle with their spouse. In all this stress, there's 101 different things that come up, but it always comes back to the gospel. God loved them so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross to forgive them of their sins, of where they've come up short, where they've failed, where they've been selfish. And then he rose again that we might have eternal life with him, that we might have the right to become children of God. 
children of God who can walk through that hardship, yet have a joy beyond, beyond comprehension. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I love my job. I love it. People come in with awful, horrific stories. Pain unimaginable. And when I'm not walking with my God, I'm like, man, I want to get out of here. Why are they telling me this? But when I'm walking with my God, they tell me these stories and I get excited. Because I know God is going to meet them. God's joy is right there, about to break through. And I get to be the witness that Brett was talking about. I get to be the witness to say, your story is so painful, but I see God moving in you. What an honor. What an honor. I want to say thank you for being a part of my life. I want to say thank you for praying for us. We need it. I need it. Thank you for being people committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ here in Friona and realizing that this gospel that we have needs to go throughout the world. Thank you for engaging that. That's not a small thing. I would encourage you guys, I would encourage you guys this morning to think, where am I hurting? Where am I where am I allowing sin to have free reign in my heart? Where am I allowing the brokenness of this world to distract me? And come back to the Lord. Come back to him. Look full into his beautiful face. One last note. If you would like to be part of getting more information about what we're doing. We have a newsletter sign up in the back. We would love to send those to you. We would love to stay in touch with you guys because we know we can't do what we do alone. And because of who you are, we have been able to be over there for as long as we have. Thank you so much. Greg, thank you. Don't run off just yet. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you just a few questions. They'll be easy ones. This, right. I, had a, I, I visited with Greg a little bit more than most others. So, uh, so you mentioned uh, y- y'all's main ministry now is where you're in Thailand and it, it's support for missionaries who, who are on the field. Uh, so so kind of what does that look like practically and what missionaries do y'all work with? Is it just pioneer missionaries or, or just some of the nuts and bolts of that? What does that look like? The nuts and bolts are, uh, we actually, in Thailand, there is a Christian counseling center that some people about 20 years ago had the foresight of saying, this is a huge need amongst missionaries. And so they started one. And it started with just a couple counselors, and now we're up to 14 counselors and a psychiatrist. And we serve missionaries from pretty much every sending organization Um, If they are in Asia to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, we are available. And we, uh, what it looks like is kind of like what normal counseling would look like. They contact us and say, hey, we we would like some help. And either online or in person, some people need a break from where they're serving. And so they come to Thailand and we kind of do an intensive counseling format for them and a lot of people we do we all are familiar with zoom and skype and all that and we a lot of it we do that way 
Um, and that's what it looks like. We sit down and have those, have those talks, have those difficult conversations. Amen. So let me ask you, you know, y'all are on our church prayer list. Um, just regularly praying for y'all, especially when you go back. How's the best way we can specifically be praying for you and, and Clarissa and y'all's family? Well, the short term is we are on this massive road trip all across, pretty much across the U.S. In fact, we're going to eat lunch here, and then we are headed to Detroit. So, of all places, I've never been up there, but we had Clarissa's brother moved up there. So, we are on this massive road trip, visiting churches, visiting um, um, friends and people who support us, and just all over the all over the country. And so, traveling mercy that we'd be kind to one another in the car, that iPads would stay charged, and um, things like that would yeah. be the short term. Y'all are just normal people, sounds We're just like. just normal yeah, people. That's good to hear. We're just normal people eating too many Reese's peanut butter cups from gas stations. Um, but we also, for the, um, the longer term, in August we'll be back that you would just pray that we as a counseling service would know how to best use our talents. Yeah. The need is vast. We have, we have a very long waiting list. There's several other counseling services that focus on missionaries. Every single one of them has a two to six month waiting list. Uh, and it's, it's because it's a, it's, a lot of people in a lot of very stressful situations. And we are actually really excited to be able to provide not just counseling help, but almost all of us have a missions background. Mm -hmm. So we have the experience to be able to come alongside um, people as peers, as colleagues. So yeah. pray for all these, for Cornerstone and the others, that we would be able to grow in a way that honors God, but also in a way that, that meets the need of the missionaries serving in some very difficult places. Amen. Amen. And after the service, y'all y'all be hanging around uh, in the back. You can come to the back. If you want to visit with Greg Moore, don't forget to sign up for their, their prayer. Their, their email updates is in the back, and also there's a big uh, postcard you remember to pray for them, but let's, do you mind if we take a second and just pray for you and, and, and the ministry? Very good. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Jesus, you give us um, peace with God when you save us from our sins, and Jesus, you are our peace. And Lord Jesus, I pray over Greg and, and Clarissa and their family. I do pray for traveling mercies and safety. Uh, Lord, as they're here stateside, I pray that they're times with a family and times as they're worshiping with others that those would be times that are that are sweet lord that you would um, encourage them and refresh them and lord i pray for them when they get back to thailand father i pray that uh, that as their family transitions back uh, just to be in there in thailand lord that they would hit the ground running lord i pray for greg and and the team at the counseling center lord i pray that you would uh, just multiply their work, Father, anoint them for the task at hand of, of supporting missionaries. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you uh, are at work in Greg and his family, and Lord, also through the ministry that they are a part of. And Lord, we pray for our missionaries that are on the field. Lord, I pray that they would be faithful, Lord God, because you are faithful. Lord, I pray that you would fill them with your spirit. Lord, anoint them for the task and the service where they're at. And Lord, I pray for us as believers that that, Lord, here in, in a much more comfortable setting, Lord, that we would not neglect the importance of supporting and praying and lifting them up. Lord, we thank you for how good you are. Lord, we thank you for the salvation you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Greg, thank you so much for sharing with us. And we're going to have a time of response because here's the reality. Just two things come to mind is that you know, you don't have to be a missionary serving in some really hard, difficult place to have just some stress or difficulties in your life. And I think just like Greg said, is, is when you look at that, whether you're a missionary or a farmer or a, or a student, that it all comes back to Jesus. Because Jesus, he is our peace. And, and he promises us that even through the trials and difficulties of life, man, that he is able to walk with us through that. You know, maybe you're here this morning, though, and, and the Lord has made clear to you that, that your greatest need, though, is 
to give your life to Jesus Christ. In just a few moments, we're going to sing a song. And, and Kevin, you and the instrumentalist, y'all can go ahead and, and get ready. And it's going to be a time of response. And while the congregation sings, I encourage you to respond as the Lord is leading you, just to step out from where you are. Maybe you need me, to, me or Jason to pray with you uh, just about some things going on in your life. Um, but would you be obedient as the Lord is leading you to respond this morning? I invite you to stand. And we're going to worship the Lord as we respond. Would you respond as the Lord is leading you? Jesus is Savior and Lord of my life. My hope, my glory, my all. Wonderful master in joy and in strife, on him you too may call. Jesus is Lord of all, Jesus is Lord of all. Lord of my thoughts and my service each day, Jesus is Lord of all. Blessed Redeemer, all glorious King, worthy of reverence I pay. Tribute and praises I joyfully bring to Him the life, the way. Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of all. Lord of my thoughts and my service each day, Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is Lord over all? Yeah. Uh, that's true just over the world, but also things in your life. And so I pray that you are uh, walking with him. Now, it's been a wonderful day. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for sharing with us. And Greg and Clarissa, thank you all for, for stopping in Friona. It's been a blessing to have you all here. And also our group from Colorado Christian, thank you all for, uh, for stopping by. Gayla, you're kind of the point person on that, so thanks for organizing that. And our host homes, uh, th there's eight in our group, and so we had four different homes that took two for the night. And, uh, and so they're going to be heading back home later today. Because where is it that y'all were able to serve at, or where y'all were at? Okay, that is way down there, nice and hot, I would assume, for y'all down there. Well, thank y'all for serving. Um, got a couple of announcements that we need to, to mention. That uh, big one is with camp, so Jason, if you'll share with us about what you have. Uh, just one thing, like I mentioned earlier in the service, this Thursday morning we're going to be taking 33 students uh, and five sponsors to youth camp at Glorietta. We're getting to go back to Glorietta this year, and so um, it's just going to be a, a great time just to, for the kids to draw closer uh, to God. And so on the tables up here in the front and in the back, there's a yellow piece of paper, and there's a prayer guide. Um, that if you want to know how to pray for us during that week while we're gone, uh, you can grab one of those and take it home. Uh, because here's my deal every year. Yes, youth camp is fun. It's exciting. It's a great time for students to draw closer. But I just don't want it to be another week. You know, I want it to be a week that impacts our students and the lives of our students. And so um, the names of everybody that are going are on this list um, each day. And just different things you can pray for us each day while we're gone. And so we would appreciate that. All right, right so Jason, random question. We've talked about it through the week. Did 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 all the spots get filled? I know we had some drop out. We do still have a few spots left, so uh, okay, a few, not a couple. So is that two, two, still, maybe three, two, maybe three. So, so anyway, if you still want to go, I've got to know today. Everything's got to be finalized. Yeah. two days. So or if you if want to go, I need to know. Talk like, to talk to Jason after the, the service. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> seconds. I need to know. So, okay, anyway, very, so, very very good. Um, after now, so. Yeah. yeah, if you still want to go, let me know. Um, we'll, we'll get you set up um, and everything. So Okay, awesome. Very good. Also, we've been cleaning out stuff in the office. Becky's been doing a great job with that. We've come across some freebies and some goodies. There's a table in the fellowship hall marked accordingly, freebies and goodies. So you feel free to check that out. And if you need just some random things uh, to have in your purse to give your grandkids or just to take home, it's over there on that table for you. Any other praises or announcements anybody would like to share before we dismiss? Oh, that's right. 
There's a pancake lunch for FCCLA at the community center. Is that right? Did I, okay, if I said that right. Okay, very good. All right, Kevin, will you close this in song? Let's sing. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. God bless, you're dismissed. <laughs>